Hello, uh, this is uh, Jack Walsh. Uh, I'm calling the Parks, Recreation, Human Services, and Public Safety Committee uh, our meeting to order. Uh, Let us uh, begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we would like to uh, uh, begin just uh, recognizing the uh, committee members here, myself, uh, Erica Norton, and hopefully uh, Lydia Asafadasan will be joining us. Also, we have here on the stand uh, uh, Susan Honda, the Deputy Mayor, and Council President Linda Kochmar. Uh, is there any public comment? I don't have any public comment. Okay. Uh, being no public comment, uh, on to committee business. Uh, first off, uh, item, uh, item G on the agenda is being withdrawn. It will be brought back at a, at a future meeting, but it is not, oh. not ready for discussion this evening. And yeah, I have a lot of questions. What's that? I have a lot of questions. Oh, so. <laughs> Well, the questions will wait. So, oh, okay. And Lydia is joining us. Welcome, Lydia. Um, all right. Uh, item A: Approval of the May 10, 2022 minutes. Is there? Uh, do we have a motion? I move to approve the May 10, 2022 minutes. Any Second. Okay. So it's moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Can I ask a question about the minutes, though? Oh, sure. Yeah. Go uh, ahead. Um, Lamont Styles and uh, they were here and presented, and I just want to know if that's been addressed. Uh, we're waiting to. They, they were asked to uh, provide a, a written. Uh, a written uh, report, a report. Right. And, I, and we have not received anything at this time. So I create, I had a meeting with them afterward and um, uh, Director Davis asked for some specific information so I made a form and I'm waiting for some other people to fill it out. I've got two people who filled it out. If they don't get to me in the next couple of days, I'm just going to turn in the two forms and okay. we'll have a meeting. Do you want to be in that? Do the two of you want to be in that meeting that we have with Brian about it? About I, I'd be happy to. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. okay. So who are the two people you're? So far, we've got um, um, Tizra Idahosa and Lamont Stiles have turned theirs in. And I was waiting for um, Winston Bell, and the other ones are progress pushers. So I was waiting for two more groups. Okay. Um, but I'll I'll give them a call tomorrow. I, I haven't been pursuing them. Okay. If, all it, right. if it's something that this committee is going to vote on, you can't have all three of you there. That's true. Oh, oh okay. We can't. That would be a quorum. Only. That would be a quorum. Okay. Yeah. Then who? Right. Then you should be there because you're the chair. Well, uh, you can't well, even we have, can't two. have two of us. We you can't can only have two one of us because. Of with a <coughs> committee of three, two's a, a, a form, quorum. A quorum. Okay. So, so, but if it's not coming to this committee, then you can all be there. Well, I'll ask Director Davis about whether or not it's because I didn't think it was coming to committee. I thought that Miss that Director Hutton and Director Davis were going to be um, making those determinations. I don't know. Okay. It's yeah. up in the air right now. Yeah. Can consult with Brian. Right? I were, were the so were the form the form you filled out was that like for human services? No, I just okay. made it up. Oh, just made it's it's just what they want. They have to be they have to be really precise in my opinion about what they need. And so I asked for the name of their organization, their UBI number, EIN, just you know the space they need. What's the nature of the organization? It's just a. a mm -hmm. I made it up. Well, so. normally, <clears throat> I don't know if this is the way it would because I, I don't know what they're asking for. But usually, you know, like human services has a form that they use 
that they give it. It's a normal, it's a regular form really? that goes okay. to everybody. And that might be, and then it wouldn't be, well, it would come to this committee, but it would go through human services before it got to this committee. Okay. But so the, get the then, human services form then? Okay. I, 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 it looks it's like Sarah. That. However, it's too late for that. Well, we have uh, the ARPA funding that we'll be discussing. Yeah. Okay. There, there is going to be some money that we are putting okay. into programs okay. like yes. this, and there'll be an application process. So, right. so we're gonna we're gonna create a form for the application for the ARPA. I'm sure, Miss Sarah. <laughs> yes, uh, Sarah. It, it looks like you would like to say something. I thought forms were provided by the feds. I looked it up a couple days it's ago. It's going to be our pro it's going to be our program. Okay. So. All right. All right, Sarah, okay. uh, Manager Bridgeford is coming forward to make some comments. Um, I, I would just clarify that we don't have a form that would serve the purpose at hand, um, so there isn't something existing. Yeah. If this is relating to space um, and, and then funding with, I think ARPA. that related to the the ARPA funds. ARPA. Yeah, there there will if there is um, an application, we will have a city form and a public uh, process like that. Okay. Um, Sarah, do you want me to send you the forms that I have found that the feds have put out? I mean, if you just wanted to take it and, and duplicate it so you don't have to make one up, or I don't know. I don't know if that would help, or? I, I would be happy to take that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Thank All you. Right. Any other uh, questions? No. Okay. All it, was right. it was in the minutes. So I just wanted to make sure that we Okay. okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's, did we, uh, we haven't approved the minutes then. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. All right. Going on to item B, the 2023 SKAHP work plan and budget. And the presenter is Angela San Filippo. And Angela's joining us on Zoom. Angela's joining us on Zoom. Oh, all, all right. Very well. Uh, welcome, Angela. Thank you so much for having me. Can everyone hear me okay? We hear you loud and clear. Great. Um, Angela Sanfilippo, Executive Manager with SKIP, South King Housing and Homelessness Partners. And I am going to um, go ahead and share my screen as I go through um, our work plan development and a short progress update. So good evening. Thanks everyone for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to join you virtually. Um, hopefully at some point I'll be there in person, but appreciate the opportunity to um, make this a little bit more efficient for myself. Um, just a little bit um, to take a step back and provide a little bit of context on SKIP um, for all of you. Um, Federal Way is a member of SKIP. We are a partnership of 11 jurisdictions across South King County whose mission is to work together and share resources to create a coordinated, comprehensive, and equitable approach to increasing housing stability reducing homelessness and producing and preserving quality affordable housing in South King County. In terms of our overarching objectives, they fall into three kind of big categories. The first one being around housing policy and planning and really skip serves as an entity to share technical and in technical information and resources that help promote housing policies across the South King County um, subregion. The second area is around affordable housing investment, and we are coordinating public resources um, to create both um, greater private as well as public investment into affordable housing in South King County. And then the third area of work is around outreach, education, and advocacy. So um, providing a unified voice to advocate for South King County needs at both the local, regional, and state level. In terms of just a real quick uh, progress update from 2021, um, I just wanted to highlight a few key areas um, of some of our accomplishments um, over the past year. We did appoint our first um, inaugural SKIP advisory board. Um, that SKIP advisory board is made up of 12 community members that are really um, deeply connected to South King County and specifically connected to 
populations and communities that are most um, impacted by housing costs. Um, primarily, they are representatives of organizations or individuals um, that work with community members across South King County. And we did strive for um, pretty broad representation, both around geography and the types of experience and expertise that folks are folks are bringing to the table to really um, guide and influence um, the executive board's decision making um, in a way that really helps to incorporate community voice. Second just key highlight is um, we've been pursuing um, the formation of a SKIP foundation and we received our Washington nonprofit status. This is a tool for SKIP um, to um, look towards applying for funds and increasing that private investment component. Um, we are not a nonprofit. We aren't thinking of turning SKIP into its own nonprofit, but this would be kind of a fundraising arm um, for that private investment piece. In terms of our SKIP housing capital fund, um, in 2021, we had nine of our member cities adopt an interlocal agreement that provided a mechanism to pool sales tax credit funds. So those really are um, just a sales tax credit that the state has authorized through substitute House Bill 1406 to go specifically towards affordable housing. Individually, they don't amount to a whole lot of dollars for each individual community, but collectively um, they have the opportunity to provide um, a um, skip housing capital fund and the ability to leverage other, pu uh, other public funds. We drafted funding guidelines, um, which we hope, and I'll get into this in a little bit more detail, to put into play this year, and also adopted um, administrative procedures for that housing capital fund. SKIP staff helped support six of our partner jurisdictions through the Housing Action Plan development and adoption. We also um, yearly um, adopt state legislative priorities helping again to provide that kind of unified voice and advocacy for South King County. It helps to um, both communicate about who SKIP is, but what, um, what the um, shared priorities we have across the South King County region. And then the last item I wanted to highlight was um, we were awarded Department of Commerce funds through Housing Action Plan implementation grants. We have several of our member cities that are working on a collaborative effort to inventory both regulated and unregulated affordable housing across the South King County region. With that kind of high level brief update, I am going to um, go right into um, kind of our areas of focus for 2022 to just give you an idea of the things that we are um, working on currently before I dive into the 2023 work plan. So this year, um, we are looking to execute our first funding round from the SKIP Housing Capital Fund. So that would actually be um, reviewing applications and allocating funds um, to affordable housing projects. Um, we're also continuing to build funding support. So building on that Washington State nonprofit status, we're actually pursuing um, 501c3 status through the federal government. Um, that is a fairly long um, backlog through the IRS, so we are waiting on that, um, but excited about the opportunity to um, reach that level of status, which some of our philanthropic organizations across the region really require to apply for their grant funds. Hey, Angela, could, could you drag your, uh, um, what, what, what you, the, the photos of the, what, where, where you and the, 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 the small frames across the screen so we can see the full Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you could see those. Is that better? Uh, no, it's the no? same. Hmm. How about there? Not. Did didn't, that didn't do anything. Okay. Um, um, no. I dragged them out of the way. Okay. I don't know if maybe, maybe it's not you. Maybe it's it's uh. Maybe it's, maybe it's on our end. I I don't know, if uh. So anyway, go go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, well, let me know if there's uh, there's other things I can do um, okay. to, that would help to fix that. Um, the second item, second bullet point there under build funding support has been um, continued some relationship building that we've started in 2021 um, into 2022. This is really partnering with some of our other stakeholder groups in the region to really establish relationships 
as well as pitch the idea of our skip housing capital fund to some of the philanthropic organizations across the region. We also work with a group of developers and planners across the region to help really better understand what the barriers are to increasing construction and preservation of affordable housing. This is really a collaborative group that meets um, every other month um, to share information and resources outside of specific um, project areas and SKIP convenes that group. We've also done an inventory and assessment of existing housing policies across the region. This is really an opportunity um, to kind of tap into that like sharing of technical information and um, existing housing policies that maybe um, peer um, governments have put into play or um, other areas um, to kind of learn from across the region. Um, and then the inventory and monitoring of affordable housing, that is what I mentioned the Department of Commerce grant funding really going towards, and we are kicking off um, that project actually later this week with a kickoff meeting with our um, land use planners. And the last item here is really about establishing some strategic three to five year goals and objectives. Um, so that work will be later this year, and it's really just in addition to our annual annual work planning, we want to think a little bit further out strategically about um, where we are going as an organization, what are our goals and objectives over the next three to five years. In terms of our work plan process, um, this might look familiar to some of you because this is an annual work, pla work plan um, that we have come to you all before. Um, but really, we internally work with our staff work group and advisory board on um, development of the work plan um, before bringing it to the executive board um, during the spring through May and June. Um, and then during June and July, really where we are right now is reviewing um, the work plan and um, soliciting input from all of our partner councils on that work plan, answering any questions that you might have, um, and also um, getting your feedback into um, the proposed um, area of work over the next year. We foresee that that work plan and budget would be adopted um, in August and then come back to each of our partner councils in the fall and winter um, for adoption of both the work plan as well as the budget. And that is a requirement of the SKIP interlocal agreement is that you all um, adopt that that work plan as well. In terms of the work plan itself, um, it is organized into um, five goal areas um, and each of the goal areas have action items um, that include items that are critical um, and those are really critical to either moving work forward that has begun um, in previous years or critical to really meeting the requirements of our interlocal agreement. Um, the third um, priority is important. So those are very important items that the advisory board, staff work group, and executive board have indicated as being um, a priority for SKIP to carry forward, um, but not as critical to kind of meeting our, um, you know, existing commitments or carrying work forward. The third one is desirable. Those are kind of would be nice, not rising to the same priority level, but would be nice if we were able to get to them. Really the important part of that is it creates some flexibility in the way that's organized. Um, currently, SKIP is a staff of one, um, myself. Um, so really thinking about what the staff capacity is um, and also thinking about emerging issues that might come up throughout the year um, or um, you know, work plan items that may take longer than expected and it provides a little bit of flexibility within our work plan to respond to some of those things. So the work plan proposal itself, um, the first goal is really about um, administration and defining strategy, direction, and long-term goals. Um, really critical component of this is to develop a long-term funding strategy for the SKIP Housing Capital Fund. Um, that is um, seen as a really strong priority for SKIP and our member jurisdictions to really increase public um, or increase investment into affordable housing, both public and private. So thinking about um, our long-term strategy for um, sustaining that capital fund is a really important piece of the work moving forward. The other areas here are items that are really in our interlocal agreement, developing our annual work plan and budget, 
um, distributing quarterly progress reports. Um, those are all things um, administratively that we do each year um, to really just um, be accountable to our member jurisdictions and our executive board, um, and then also think about um, work and budget for the, um, the next year. Another important area that has been identified um, is to develop a plan to build the capacity of SKIP. So as we think about taking on more work um, and we think about um, how to really um, sustain SKIP as an organization, we also need to think about our staff capacity and, and how much we have the ability to do. Second goal is building long-term sustainability for the SKIP Housing Capital Fund. Um, so the critical items in here are really about carrying forward um, the um, first funding round, which we are going to go through in 2022. So that means um, the final approvals through member councils would happen at the first part of 2023. Um, also preparing contract documents and actually distributing funds would be done in the first part of 2023 as well. Um, and then it also includes a monitoring um, and evaluation component for any projects that um, have been allocated funds to really make sure that they are meeting their end of the agreements um, through those um, funding allocations. And then regular financial reports. So that is something that we do with our operating budget. It is something that we will um, start to do with the SKIP Housing Capital Fund as we start um, allocating funds is really just providing some regular reports um, to uh, the executive board on how those funds are being used. And then in important areas of work, um, working collaboratively with our other public funders in the area, um, and that is really about um, how we can align our goals with our other public funders um, to make sure that we are really leveraging the SKIP Housing Capital Fund and thinking about how we can create equitable geographic distribution of resources across the region. And it really is important for us to work with our other public funders in that realm. Also thinking about that private investor component, um, this is continued um, from some of the work that we've started with philanthropic institutions, but continuing to work with um, those groups to really think about, um, again, leveraging um, our investment um, with private resources as well. And then thinking about how to develop um, a pipeline of projects. So thinking about um, as we have this skip, as we stand up the skip housing capital fund, um, having some pipeline projects sort of in the wings, um, knowing that um, we don't have a huge significant pot of funds, um, but if we can work with um, applicants on their projects to get them sort of ready for the next funding round and build that kind of pipeline um, will really help to build that sustainability of our, our housing capital fund and um, help us to kind of vet potential projects um, through our uh, member jurisdictions as well as through the executive board. The next goal area is really thinking about working with our partner jurisdictions to enhance um, and develop new local policies and programs that um, both protect existing affordable housing stock and also um, provide housing security. Um, so this um, includes providing regular updates to the housing policy matrix that I touched on um, that we have been working on this year. Um, and also um, regular updates to the affordable housing database, which is work that is kicking off this year as well. So those require some um, maintenance updates year over year to keep those current. Um, we also um, skip convene city and county land use planners. Um, we will continue to convene that group through um, both housing action plan implementation as well as comprehensive plan updates to help increase coordination and collaboration on housing policy and planning. Um, and then the third area is um, supporting efforts to advance the five-year action plan um, that was identified by the Regional Affordable Housing Task Force. And um, there's significant overlap in um, some of the work that SKIP does, um, or not the work that we do, but the goals that we have that SKIP has. Um, and the goals that the Affordable Housing Committee does at the county level. And it's really important for us to work um, side by side so that we don't duplicate efforts, um, so that the work that we do um, is really value add to um, the work that they're doing and vice versa, so that we are not duplicating efforts. 
The last critical piece, I apologize, it looks like it's not in its own bullet point here, but is to develop some sub-regional strategies for housing preservation. So this will build on the affordable housing database that we are developing um, that really is going to help us to um, inventory and monitor both regulated and unregulated, unregulated affordable housing across the region um, and will help to inform um, what we hope to be sub-regional strategies for preservation of the affordable housing that really exists in our communities already. And then the important piece um, as we think about um, you know, into the future of SKIP and how we can really be um, value to um, our member jurisdictions, really thinking about ways to assist our member cities with, it, with administering local housing incentive programs. Um, so this is a piece of work that we foresee kind of visioning and thinking through um, how best to really support our member cities in um, administering programs that they might have in place currently. Um, like multifamily tax exemptions or impact fee waivers, but also thinking through things that might be on the horizon as um, you think about your comprehensive plans um, and implementation of housing action plans. And then the next goal area is around representing South King County and our unique affordable housing needs um, at relevant decision tables and um, also fostering collaboration. So SKIP staff um, do represent SKIP at um, several relevant local and regional meetings. It helps us to advance SKIP's mission as well as provides a voice for really understanding um, housing across South King County. An important part of this work is also um, thinking about building relationships with state and federal legislators. Um, that's really to kind of help them to understand SKIP a little bit better, as well as um, think about how we can advocate for the needs of South King County at both the state and federal level. And the last area of work is really around um, education and furthering the understanding of affordable housing options um, across the housing system. So we do throughout the year coordinate with housing organizations and other stakeholder groups to provide education and engagement opportunities um, for a broad range of audiences, elected officials, um, stakeholder groups, um, member city staff or other community members. Um, we also hold monthly um, executive board educational topics as a component of our meetings and that really helps to um, keep the executive board apprised of any emerging issues or research into um, areas um, that really align with SKIP's overarching goals and objectives. An area that's been identified as important that we started doing last year is really providing some of our annual updates um, to non-SKIP South King County cities and other relevant stakeholder groups. So we do have a couple cities across the region that are not currently members. We see it as an important part of our work to just keep them apprised of the work that we're doing, um, keep them a little bit up to speed. It really is just um, sharing some of our annual reporting out um, with them through a letter from our um, chair of the executive board. And then a desirable component, this is the only desirable one that's kind of a would be nice as I started um, laid out earlier, is to um, think about how to reimagine this South King County Joint Planners and Developers Group that SKIP has been convening over the last couple of years. That is a space um, that I talked about a little bit earlier to collaborate between um, city and county staff and affordable housing developers outside of um, existing projects. Um, we meet every other month. Um, and the participation does kind of ebb and flow. So I think that um, a desirable portion of this work would be to work with the Housing Development Consortium, who has really significant um, ties to the affordable housing development community, um, to think about how we can increase that participation and make that group um, as valuable to folks as possible. And then the last area that I wanted to touch on, in addition to the work plan, is our SKIP budget. The 2023 SKIP budget um, builds upon um, what we implemented in 2022, which is to increase our member jurisdiction contributions incrementally so that we are working towards a balanced budget. Um, we, um, when we were formed, um, SKIP 
um, passed a two-year budget um, that didn't necessarily reflect um, the exact operating costs. It was more of a projection of what those operating costs would be, um, and member jurisdiction contributions were a reflection of that. Um, so we are um, incrementally increasing contributions so that we can have a balanced budget within the next um, three years that includes two full-time positions. So the executive manager position, as well as a program coordinator position. Um, it also includes um, a small amount of compensation for our advisory board members. That is something that we don't have the structure in place for yet, but um, we did pass as part of our 2022 skip budget um, and foresee that continuing um, into future years as well so that we can really um, show the value for folks' time who are volunteering on that advisory board and also um, decreasing um, the barriers that folks might have to volunteering for something like that. So we recognize that um, community members have different ability to volunteer their time and tapping into that knowledge and experience is a really important component of establishing that advisory board. Last item at a fairly high level is that budget does include some legal services for executing housing capital fund contracts. And that goes back to um, kind of fully rounding out the 2022 funding allocation process. We'll be actually entering into contracts um, and providing some legal expertise to help us do that. So with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen and open it up for any comments or questions that you all might have for me. Right, uh, Deputy Mayor Honda, let's start with you with questions. Thank you, I have a few questions. Um, I attended the first few meetings before uh, SCIP is formally formed, and I have some questions about the community members. There are 12 community members. Are, does each jurisdiction have someone representing their jurisdiction? And, um, do you have a list of who the advisory board members are? Have you testified at any state hearings for housing and do you work with ARCH when you do that? Because I would imagine that ARCH has some of the same concerns that Skip would have. And can you talk to us about the increased um, contributions you expect in 2023 and beyond? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will kind of take those one at a time. Um, the first one being around the advisory board um, and the list of members. The list of advisory board members is on our um, SKIP webpage. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know if I can provide a link in the chat or I can kind of direct you there, but it does provide um, names as well as brief bios of all of our advisory board members. Um, and to your first question around if each community has a representative, um, the each community does have a representative on the executive board, which is really our final decision makers. But on the advisory board, we really tried for um, overarching geographic um, representation. We have a number of folks who represent organizations that work across South King County or with multiple jurisdictions. Um, and then we have individuals um, that may live in specific areas of South King County, but they aren't attributed specifically to each jurisdiction, if, if that kind of makes sense. So just as an example, we have an advisory board member who um, is representing the multi-service center. They provide a lot of services across um, South King County. Um, so that's kind of one example of that. Um, we also have a representative from the King County Housing Authority, again, an organization who provides services across South King County. Um, and then we do have, um, on an individual basis, um, many folks who live in different areas of the region. Um, but not necessarily attributed to specifically to representing that geographic area. And then to your um, question about state hearings, I have not testified to this point on um, any state hearings, but I do work with ARCH very closely in terms of, um, we do have pretty um, 
similar types of goals and priorities as well as um, work plan um, items. And it really is useful for us as um, ARCH has been around for many, many decades at this point. They've been around since the mid 90s. Um, they really are a tool for us to learn from as well as to collaborate with and when it comes to kind of shared priorities. Um, and that includes, you know, not just those state level legislative priorities, but um, local and regional priorities as well. So ARCH participates on some of the similar um, regional tables that SKIP participates on. Um, and it's really useful for us to provide both um, what can be shared perspective as regional organizations um, around housing and kind of convening um, member jurisdictions, but then also providing um, a little bit different perspective because I think we all know that East Side where Arch operates is, is quite different than South King County and really recognizing and understanding those differences um, as decisions are made at regional tables is really an important component of that. And then in terms of the increased contributions, um, Federal Way is in a um, very unique position um, in this coming year in that um, the SKIP member contributions are based on population tiers that were established in our interlocal agreement. And Federal Way has gone from one population tier to the next because the population has um, risen over 100,000. So the population increase specific to Federal Way has gone up. Um, I believe in talking with your staff, that is something that um, your staff has been planning for, recognizing that you were gonna go over that 100,000 population um, threshold. So just in terms of specific numbers, um, in 2022, the contribution was just under 30,000 for Federal Way. And in 2023, um, it has gone up because of that population tier, as well as a, an incremental increase um, to um, 44,965. So those are kind of specific numbers, but a little bit of background to kind of understand why there's as big of a jump because um, most of our cities aren't seeing that big of a jump because they, they haven't um, changed population tiers. Okay, uh, one, more that, one more question yeah. on the advisory board. Uh, you talked about compensation. If your mem if some of your members work for um, the multi-service center or some other organization, would they be compensated for attending the advisory board? Really good question. So the executive board um, has not developed the structure for exactly what that looks like. Our advisory board members currently are not being compensated. Um, but one of the things that is highly recommended and the executive board has talked through on some level um, without actually having the structure in place yet is that if advisory board members are already compensated for their time because they are representatives of an organization they would not receive compensation okay thank you very much thanks for being here yeah thank you appreciate it uh anyone else with questions or i i no, I, I have a, a couple of them. Uh, you mentioned with the interlocal agreement uh, was for the how to use the, the sales tax. Is that sales tax the, the 0.1% tax that was uh, that was passed? It's, um, it's actually not a sales tax increase at this point um, and what we're using for the SKIP housing capital fund, but it's actually a sales tax credit. It's a much smaller um, component. I think it's Oh gosh, I don't remember the exact decimal point, but it's a sales tax credit that um, is part of the existing sales tax um, within the jurisdiction. The state is just crediting back to cities that implemented um, ordinances kind of taking advantage of it by a certain date. Um, and those have been pooled um, with SKIP by nine of our member cities. So those, um, it's a little bit different. I know it's a little bit confusing, but the point that one tenth of 1% sales tax that King County passed um, and several jurisdictions um, also passed locally um, is a different kind of separate conversation that this is actually just a sales tax credit within your existing, um, what your existing sales tax is. Okay, thank you. Uh, you've covered a lot of the, the, the plans and what, what Skip, um, 
Yeah, what can we do to put things in more concrete terms? I mean, what has Skip done here in Federal Way that we can, yeah, that John Doe on the street can say, hey, this is this way because of Skip? Yeah, I think that's it's a really good question. It's also it's a it's a bit of a difficult question um, in that um, we are a regional collaboration. In that um, you know we're looking at it from more of a sub regional lens in affecting housing across the region. Um, so in terms of like you know wanting to be able to say like we built this project in federal way or we added you know this um, this amount of um, investment in federal way. I think that's going to come with with time over, um, you know, a variety of years of like funding the Skip Housing Capital Fund. One of the goals is that we work towards kind of geographic equity and how we um, fund projects. So Federal Way may not um, be funded in that first year, but over time we would look at, um, you know, how we are creating that type of equity across the region. Um, so it's it's a little bit difficult to um, to kind of to answer that, it's also um, because we are in some of our first years of operating, so much of what we have been doing is really standing up the organization, standing up our administrative procedures, getting the capital fund you know, up and running, um, getting our advisory board in play. So it's like a lot of administrative tasks in addition to you know, really helping to support um, your staff um, as they work through some of the policies and, and programs around like housing action plans um, or other things that they might be pursuing. So I don't know that I really answered your question, but hopefully I provided a little bit of context. So at, at this point, is, are there concrete things in any of the SKIP uh, cities that, that you can point to, or has it been entirely uh, just organizing and getting things going at this point? There's definitely been concrete um, policies and programs that have been have been put into play in some of our member cities. Um, so thinking about um, some of the things that happened in uh, 2020 and 2021, Auburn um, and Burien both passed rental housing ordinances um, that include like just cause legislation as well as increased notice for rent increases. Um, we also saw Renton and Kent implement rental inspection and registration programs. That's a pretty significant um, step towards um, ensuring quality of housing across you know, their multifamily housing stock. There certainly have been policies and programs that have been put into play um, by our member jurisdictions that SKIP really plays a component of um, providing some technical um, experience and insight into, um, as well as just kind of staff support um, as they go through implementing some of those policies and programs. All right, thank you, Angela. Uh, if there's no further questions by anyone. Uh, thank you very much for your for your report. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Uh, let's go on to. Um, Next item on the agenda, uh, C, Arts Commission and Federal Way Performing Arts Foundation, MOU. And I believe that Cody Geddes has the, will be addressing us. Yes, thanks council for hearing us tonight. This process is formalized since the last time we saw each other. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, the Arts Commission. We have several members here. Uh, Chair Vicki Chenoweth is here. Uh, Vice Chair Karen Bergato and Commissioner Avetta Felsenberg is here to uh, support this <clears throat> question. Policy question on the table is should the City Council approve an MOU between the Arts Commission and the Federal Way Performing Arts Foundation regarding funding to support the Arts Explosion event planned for June 2023 at the Performing Arts and Events Center? And included in that is our memo um, giving you a brief on the event itself and uh, the financial impacts. And the financial impacts for 2023 at this point is the Arts Commission voted to set aside $3,000 uh, of their 2023 budget as a contingency for any cost overruns that might not be covered by funds raised through grants or sponsorship obtained uh, with this MOU. Any contingency funds not used for the Arts Explosion event will be reallocated 
to an approved work plan expense, for an example, uh, the traffic graphic projects. Uh, the background information on this is at the December 2nd, 2021 Arts Commission meeting, the current Arts Commission reviewed and voted on a work plan for 2022 that included the Arts Explosion event at the Performing Arts Center. The Arts Explosion is a multifaceted arts event that will include local artists and offer free art events to the City of Federal Way community through performing and visual mediums. The event is currently scheduled to take place at the PAC on June 2nd through the 4th. Questions? Uh, Council Member Asefa Dawson. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think this is great, uh, you know, to have this MOU between the two entities. My question is around funding, though. So in the um, agreement, the 10000 and the 20000 that is committed by November 30th and then January 1st, where's that coming from because you only talked about the 3000 that is set aside the 3000 is set aside to co to cover any cost overruns the 10000 and the 20000 marked in the MOU would be funds raised uh, with the arts commission and the the federal way performing arts foundation so those funds are are markers essentially that if they don't get those funding um, if they don't get to those funding goals, then they're gonna reevaluate the situation and decide if they're gonna move forward with this event or not. Currently, we do not have uh, funds in the Arts Commission budget to cover this event, and, and hence the MOU. So is it realistic that the, the 10,000 and the 20 will happen um, at the milestone? At this point, there hasn't been any, um, they're waiting on the MOU to be signed to then move forward with uh, the Performing Arts Center Foundation to go out and, and raise funds. The benefit to the foundation is they're a 501c3, and so it allows them to uh, have more opportunities for grant funding. Uh, Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. For the, uh, the 10,000 and the 20,000, so both the foundation and the arts commission members will be trying to to raise this money yeah the, the arts commission plans to take the lead on on the um on the the raising of the funds and going out and asking and, and applying for grants uh essentially they're using the 501c3 through the foundation as, as more of a pass-through so they're they'll be trying to raise the money through grants and not getting um are, are they charging the artists who are going to be there? Yes. Do you want to talk about a little, little bit about the program to refresh our memories? Yeah, so um, would anybody from the Arts Commission like to, to get up? They put a lot of work and effort into this. Well, this is rather unexpected, but the Arts <clears throat> Explosion will be um, an entry fee for all artists to show. Um, all the artwork there will be for sale. Um, of course, when we have it there and we advertise for it, um, there is a commission that will be charged each artist for their work. Um, we plan on getting grants as well as sponsorships. Um, it's interesting to note that Jean Burbage has told me that we used to have one of these before years ago, and the banks around would sponsor some of the prizes, um, and sponsorships were able to be um, to, to be had and also we have applied for ARPA funds for this signature event for the Arts Commission as well. Is this taking the place of Arts Alive? No, Arts Alive is still alive. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Okay. Um, but uh, Arts Alive is a different time and it just features local artists um, and it's on the red wall at the PAEC. Um, I don't know if you know what the red wall is but if you go in yeah. to the bathroom around the corner, yeah, it's that big red wall. Um, we plan on having this arts explosion. Uh, the winners hopefully will not mind having their works shown on the red wall as well because I, there won't be just local artists. We probably will have a few guest artists as well. And it will be judged. We have three different artists um, from around here that will be judging the art for the arts explosion. It will be um, a weekend we will have a red carpet event 
where hopefully the city council and the mayor can give awards out. It's open to the public on Saturday where we'll have food trucks, music will uh, be there as well. And then on Sunday, the public can also visit and then buy their art and either take it away or have it shown in the PAEC. So what is the overall budget then for the program? It's about twenty-five dollars to $30,000 for the overall budget. Uh, marketing is kind of up in the air um, because, of course, rates have increased. And we had the budget made um, about a year and a half ago. So things can get, get more. But between the ARPA funds that we requested and our sponsorships that we can have now that uh, we have this MOU with the foundation, we really think it's going to be a great event and be one of those that will get the PAEC and federally known. Okay. Thank you. Sounds exciting. Would you mind stating your name for the record, please? Oh, I am Karen Brigado, Arts Commissioner. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Anything else? I had a... All right. Question. Yes. Uh, Council Member Norton. Hi. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I just wanted to say I was looking for... Uh, ARPA fund um, forms, and I came across uh, <laughs> I came across a grant opportunity for what you're you. It's just I just think it's really funny that this came up, but there is a grant opportunity being offered by the Library of Congress with an award ceiling of five fifty thousand dollars, really? and the uh, closing date for the application is August first. So if we agree to do this then I can forward this to you yes um, and it is specifically for uh, um, to support contemporary cultural uh, documentation fo focusing on culture and traditions and of diverse communities like ours so exactly I like just think ours. that that it fits perfectly and mm -hmm. That's all. I just wanted to say yes. that I, if I if you wouldn't mind if I could get your um, contact information before the end of the Oh, uh, sure. Meeting, please. I would love to give it to you. That, okay. that fits in perfectly, especially with the MOU being signed and with our 501c3 partner in the foundation. It would be perfect. Right. Yes. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. All right. A uh, uh, couple of questions. So this would be the first time for the arts explosion then? Yes. Very first time. Although if you talk to Jean, it's not the very first time, but it will be for the arts explosion at the PAEC. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, so the Federal Way Performing Arts Foundation will play a, a major role. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the Federal Way Performing Arts Foundation. Um, they are a foundation that actually uh, it enhances performing arts in our uh, town. Their main goal is to transport school kids to the PAEC to have them know what it's like to to uh, see a performance, be in a performance, that kind of thing. Uh, we're asking them to go above and beyond and partner with us in this because we, we view performing arts to also be um, art and sculpture and, and other things like that. So we were really looking forward to having this union with both the foundation and the uh, Arts Commission. So, so with the Arts Explosion, I mean, the way you described it first, it would be mostly visual arts. Yeah, but visual it's, arts, So yeah. where does the intersection with performing arts? Well, come we'll in? be having some of our, um, uh, call, uh, what is it, um, some of the performing arts that we fund through the Arts Commission will actually be performing. The Federal Chorale, the uh, Youth Symphony, um, maybe the uh, Fedaway Symphony, uh, Harmony King, some of those that we fund through the Arts Commission will be performing. Okay, and so, so the, with the fundraising, did you say it would be primarily the Arts Commission or the Federal Way Performing Arts Foundation would be the, take the lead on fundraising? Uh, the Commission will take the lead. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Karen, thank you, mm -hmm. Cody. Any, uh, any further questions? Um, all right. Do we have a? Uh, yeah, on. I'll make a motion. Do, do we have a motion? Yes, I move to forward the proposed Arts Commission MOU to the June 21, 2022 Consent Agenda for approval. Second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you.
Uh, next, a little bit of change instead of uh, Autumn Gresset uh, presenting the item D report on the PAEC operations. It will, since she's doing other duties at the moment, uh, it will be Brian Davis. Uh, or I mean, excuse me. <laughs> I don't want that. I mean, you look Brian, so Brian, different, Brian. Brian Hoffman. Brian no, Hoffman. I don't want you, that. You, 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 both, you both have the height, but I mean, uh, uh, there's uh, the, the, the hairstyle is a little different. You, you have the better hairstyle. Thank you. Uh, good evening, council members. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Brian Hoffman, general manager of the Federal Way Performing Arts and Event Center with Oakview Group. I am here to present the um, most recent update for the PAC operations. Um, we will be reporting on May operations. Um, we had a, a busy month, uh, 19 overall events, um, kind of a handful that they included were uh, the local Federal Way Youth Symphony at our performance, as well as the Corral, our Federal Way Corral, two of our resident arts organizations. Um, we had a couple Punjabi concerts, one on May 6th that was sold out. Um, and then on Mother's Day, we had a uh, Soul of a Woman concert uh, that was very well attended. Uh, we finished our um, final season and final performance with the Auburn Symphony Orchestra. Uh, they performed about six performances throughout the year at the PAC. Um, then we had a Washed in Black concert, which was a Pearl Jam tribute band on May 20th. Um, and we had a couple of other events that were scheduled, but unfortunately, um, due to um, different circumstances, both of those were canceled. Um, in addition, in our event space, uh, we continue to have a contract uh, through September 30th with Amazon. Uh, they, we run out the parking lot and a small meeting space um, for them to do driver, driver training, excuse me. Um, we had the monthly Federal Way uh, Chamber Luncheon. Um, we hosted a business after hours in partnership with the Greater Federal Way Chamber. Um, on the 21st, we saw many of you there for the South King County Athletic Scholarship Fundraiser Luncheon. Um, and then we held um, the Connections Academy state testing for the week prior to Memorial Day. Um, and then the City uh, Parks Department hosted the Touch a Truck parking lot, uh, Touch a Truck in our parking lot in May as well. Um, some overall operational, um, you know, we continue to have uh, weekly, bi weekly uh, meetings with our uh, other partners within our region for uh, booking calls. Um, continue to meet with the foundation, as uh, previously mentioned in the previous presentation, um, regarding their gala and their operations for uh, the PAC. We have fully uh, transitioned 100% um, to our uh, e-tickets uh, ticketing platform. We uh, redesigned and launched uh, the PAC website to make it more user friendly, um, less clicks to purchase tickets, uh, et cetera. Um, and just a handful of uh, ongoing repairs and maintenance. Um, probably the biggest and one that is continuing to be ongoing is our landscaping project throughout the property. Um, most recently uh, removed about 30 yards of bad soil in our art exhibit project um, and in the process of putting that in. Um, and then uh, yesterday with the uh, tremendous uh, partnership and help with the Parks Department, unloaded 2,000 plants uh, to be planted in that art exhibit. Uh, so we're hoping by the end of the week that that will be uh, finalized, uh, which is only one phase of probably a three or four phase process for the landscaping through the entire uh, property. Um, and then um, June has been um, kind of a busier month um, thus far um, through uh, June 14th with uh, graduations. Um, <clears throat> we hosted another chamber luncheon. Um, we hosted um, the final performance, the senior night for the Federal Way Youth Symphony um, performance. Um, and for the first time at the back, we hosted the Washington State Wrestling Hall of Fame induction ceremony with approximately 450 to 500 guests. Um, had a wonderful event and looking to do a long-term multi-year contract with them moving forward. Um, and then uh, graduations, uh, we held five graduations in two days. 
uh, bodybuilding event um, and a Washington Chamber Ensemble uh, concert that was sold out as well this past weekend. And then a couple of uh, private events. Um, and then we will be hosting and partnering with Inspire Washington on June 29th, which is a free event open to the public on how to uh, obtain grants to 501c3 um, organizations throughout our community. So there's some free money out there. So that'll be on um, June 29th at uh, 6 o'clock at the PAC. And um, open to answer any questions to the best of my ability. Uh, let's start with uh, Council Member Aseva Dawson. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, do you guys have uh, security cameras around the facility? We do. We have multiple security cameras um, throughout the facility in the parking lot as well as inside the facility. So with the vandalism that is in your report, do we know who did that or how it uh, We don't. Um, not the vandalism to one section of the windows. We do not. Um, the, the program only goes back to two weeks. Um, we don't know, honestly, when it occurred. Um, the other window that is broke, we do know. Um, unfortunately, it was an incident that occurred with our landscaper. Um, so we are aware with that, of that. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, and uh, Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. I was also going to ask about security and about the uh, broken windows. Uh, when you have a graph c comparing 2022 to 2021 as to how many uh, shows and how often the, the building's been used, that isn't very useful because 2021 was such an odd year mm -hmm. for could you, uh, in the future, compare that to 2019, which would have been, or even 2018, 2019, which would have been the last normal years that we had? Yeah, so um, in anticipation of a question that may came up, might come up, um, I do have 2019. Uh, for 2018, I do not have, uh, Spectre Venue Management came on in the middle of the year okay. in 2018. So I do have 2019. Um, compared through April of 2019, versus April of 2022. Um, for the total number of events, there were 32 in 2019. We held 81 in 2022 for a positive variance of 49. Um, for gross ticket revenue in 2019, it was a, about 128,600. In 2022, we're at 251,964 for a positive variance or on the upside of $123,272. Um, and then the overall operating loss um, versus budget in 2019, we were behind 255,326 and we're ahead by about 169,000 in 2022. So, so in the future, I will have okay. that in, in a graph that can uh, better be seen and correlate that. Is that because uh, costs have gone up and have ticket prices gone up since 19? Um, yes, some ticket prices are. Some um, have stayed um, the same. However, we have held more ticketed events as well um, in January through April this year than we did in January through April of 20, 2019. Have your expenses gone up signif significantly? Our expenses, yeah, so, um, you know, basic electric, uh, those types of things, you know, security that we have in 2022 that we didn't have in 2019, um, those are some additional costs that have increased. Um, labor has increased, um, so, and we have not um, tried to increase our rental rates that we pass on to the users. Um, it has only slightly increased, maybe less than 3%, so, um, when your expenses go up three and you're not increasing your revenue by three, you're behind the eight ball already. Mm -hmm. um, and with a lot, uh, with our resident arts organizations, we have not increased their rates uh, since we took over in 2018. Is that because there is already a contract written with them or is that because you just haven't done that? So a combination of both. There is a, uh, I believe it was a seven year MOU uh, that goes through 2024. 
Um, however, we do have the ability of looking at those rates on an annual basis, you know, increasing them monetarily, having, having those conversations with them. Um, for 2020, 2021, we did not, and we didn't for this year, just for everybody coming out of a COVID, you know, um, there's no sense in continuing to kick a horse while it's down, so to speak. Okay, correct. Thank you very much. And thank you for doing the, um, I'll go over this weekend and look at the um, art and, and the plants and thank you for doing that. Uh, but with the, the landscaping, uh, uh, down at the street level, down below, is that, is that the pack landscaping or is that, uh, or is that uh, public works? Uh, let me be diplomatic. I, it's, it's been given to the PAC from my understanding. <laughs> um, so we, as part of our ongoing process and our current um, agreement that we have uh, for this phase with the landscaping, we have the landscaper taking care of that. In future moving forward, um, we are budgeting um, to include um, I'll call it PVR from the intersection of where Walmart is down to the intersection of the um, uh, where the hotel is and Town Square Park to the left going up to the staircase the pack will um, landscaper or vendor uh, will take care of that I've had several members of the public comment to me about <laughs> the, the the way it looks there especially between the staircase and the and the corner yeah, the, so. the, uh, the landscaping that we are responsible for or currently, um, you know, looking at, it's close to 40,000 square feet of landscaping between all the little, I call them medians, you know, the right of ways on 314th, um, you know, out in front by the art exhibit, the parking lot, and then down um, PVR and then onto 312th there. So, um, at a tune of probably close to we will be budgeting um, for 2023 2024 probably close to thirty thousand dollars just for landscaping okay with the uh, uh, currently are there any immediate plans to address things down on the there between the in in the coming weeks to address things between the uh, staircase and the corner our goal is is to have that by the end of the month all right thank you thank you all right. Thank weather you. Weather depending, though, because yeah. some some uh, what weather part, depends on stuff around here. I can't sure. believe you're saying that. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, so, all right. Uh, any other questions? All right. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. We appreciate your uh, your report. I appreciate you, folks. All right. And next on the agenda. <clears throat> Item E, Internet Crimes Against Children, ICAC Interlocal Agreement between the Seattle Police Department and the Federal Way Police Department. And I uh, believe that that is, let's say it's not Commander Neal, it's Deputy Chief Neal, right? Correct. Deputy Chief Neal. All right. Good evening, committee members. I am Deputy Chief Steve Neal with the Police Department. So the first policy question is, should the city of Federal Way and the Federal Way Police Department agree to an ICAC task force interlocal agreement with the Seattle Police Department. This is simply an ongoing agreement. It's something that we have done for years. Internet crimes against children. And uh, we are asking to continue with that agreement. It, there's no cost to the city. Uh, basically, ICAC provides a singular <coughs> and dedicated uh, computer that uh, and we have a dedicated uh, detective who works those highly sensitive cases I'd be happy to answer any questions yes uh, council member Norton I move to forward the proposed oh. agreement to uh, the mace any questions, l l any questions oh. first any any questions I didn't okay. see any. That's why I did okay. that. Okay. All right. I my only question is 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 with uh, it being in, in, um, uh, the lead organization with it being the Seattle Police Department with the the challenges with the Seattle Police Department. Do you foresee that continuing in future years with the Seattle Police Department, or is there another lead agency that that would better um, would be more 
suited? I would believe it will continue in the path that it is with the Seattle Police Department being the primary department. And uh, the way it works is obviously these types of uh, egregious cases come in and then we are uh, informed in our detective works certain cases. But I don't see that changing in the okay. near future. All right. Thank you. I mean, obviously a very, sadly, a very critical, uh, very critical need. Very sensitive so, and yes. confidential. Yes. All right. Okay. Now, Council Member Norton. Do you have a motion? Yes. I move to forward the proposed agreement to the May 17, 2022 consent agenda for approval. Second. It has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. All right. And that should take us to... Um, uh, Autumn, what was it? Item, you, you said it was item G, but it was actually item F that was? No, the, item G was removed. Purchase of portable pur purchase surveillance, of portable surveillance trailers, camera yeah. trailers. So we're okay. on to All right, H. so on to item F, Edward Byrne Memorial Justice right. Assistance Grant JAG Program for Fiscal Year 2021. And so the, pol the policy question here is should the city of Federal Way, Federal Way Police Department enter into an MOU agreement for the JAG grant for fiscal year 2021? Again, this is an ongoing grant we have received for many years. It, it's used for a variety of things in the police department, uh, generally technology, but also equipment. I believe this particular grant is $39,550. It's generally right around 39000 uh, something that we put in for every year. All right. Do we have any questions on that? All right. All right. Council Member Seth Dotson. Yeah. Um, do we expend all the funds that we get with this grant? Do we? Exp I'm sorry. Do I we didn't. use it up? Oh, absolutely. Year? We do. We we have more than enough things. It, it's it's a uh, uh, the grant can be used for enough things that uh, when we know it's coming out and, and you as you can see it's about a year behind so we have time to uh, uh, come up with the different things that we want to spend the money for there's never a shortage of that thank you sure right. any any other questions all right do we have a motion sure I move to forward the proposed JAG MOU to receive grants grant funds for fiscal year 2021 to the June 21, 2022 consent agenda for approval. Second. All right, this has been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, those opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. All right, and All right, so on to item H, agreement between the Washington Traffic Safety Commission, WTSC, and the Federal Way Police Department to provide grant funding for traffic enforcement. And uh, Deputy Chief Neal. Again, another a grant that we accept every year. Uh, the policy <coughs> question is, should the city of Federal Way, Federal Way Police Department accept $3,000 from the Washington uh, traffic safety commission for seat belt enforcement and what this does is it <clears throat> provides us funds so that instead of having to allocate resources from patrol and so on our traffic division can actually go out and enforce seat belt violations all right thank you any uh, any questions uh, do we have a motion yes I move approval Oh, I move to forward the amendment. What the heck am I on right now? Agreement between the Washington Traffic Safety Commission to provide grant funding for traffic enforcement. Is this the wrong one? Yeah, that, that's it. Okay. I move to forward the amendment to the IAA between the WTSC and the Federal Way Police Department to the June 21st, 2022 
City Council consent agenda for approval. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you, Deputy Chief Neal. Thank you. All right. Yes. And uh, is there any other business or any of the uh, first, any of the committee members have any comments? No. Other, no. other council members have comments? No. Okay. Uh, our next meeting of the uh, will be July 12th, 2022, right here at 5 p.m. And we are adjourned. Thank you.